Katie, Kendra, Janae, Cho, and me so far. Okay. I don't know who else is hopping on. If they do, that's great. Um, I'm going to go check real quick in the team, <laughs> in the team page and see if um, anyone's asking for um, the password or whatever. And then um, we'll get started here. I know sometimes the time change um, throws people. Okay, so um, this past week we were reading In the Pit with the Lion on a Snowy Day, Chapter 3. It was just so good. Hey, Julie. Welcome, welcome. We were just getting ready to go over our book study part of our um, Power Hour here. Um, so we're talking about Chapter 3. It was called I'm Learning Your Fears. And I thought it was just so good because it's so true we've we've said things to ourselves for years or we grow up even even our parents who didn't realize you know they were taught something or they said stuff um that we just learn and we have to unlearn um and like they said it sometimes it's harder to unlearn obviously than to teach yourself something new um anyway it was just a really good chapter i underlined all sorts of things in here um, but I would love to hear from each of you if you were able to get your reading done this week. And even if you didn't read chapter three, if you have, um, I think some people didn't have their books yet last week. So if you underline something in chapters one or two that really stood out to you and you'd like to share, um, just feel free to unmute yourself. And then at the end, I will share um, the different things that I highlighted and we will go on from there. So we'll just open the floor up. If you have something to share, go for it. Well, I don't have my book because I could have sworn this was at 9 and not 8.30 uh, and I'm driving, but uh, there was one question and I wish I had it memorized, but it was way too long that really stuck out to me in chapter three and it was when he was talking about when they went on their missions trip and there was a girl, I think he said her name was Sarah, and she was like absolutely terrified of everything. And there was that one little spot, and it said, you know, Sarah was scared of this and that and this and that, but she did it anyways because she was called to do it. And I don't know, that really stuck out and was scared because. I don't know exactly what I wanted to say, <laughs> but it just really stuck out to me that it doesn't matter if you're scared or not. If you're called to do it, then you need to do it, I guess. I love that. Yes, it was Sarah. You're yeah. right. That was her name. And I love that story too. Anyone else have anything that they got out of that Ethiopian trip there at the beginning of the chapter? Does everybody have their books now? Did everybody get theirs in? I know a couple of people I feel like we're still waiting on theirs. Hey, um, is there an audio version of this book? Because I don't have the book, but I don't like reading books, I like to listen to them. I have a hard time reading books. I just I get bored. <laughs> oh. I, don't, I don't know, Joe, do you know? I mean, there probably is on um, Audible. What's it called? Like, what's the book called again? <laughs> It's in the pit with in in a pit with a lion on a snowy in a day. Pit with, okay, okay. I'll I'll look it up. Thank you. It's the same guy that wrote uh, Chase the Lion, the book we read okay. last time. Yeah. Okay, so a little bit towards the middle of the chapter, he started talking about um after he started talking about unlearning um things, how we have to face our fears and we have to unlearn some things. And he talked about his son who um maybe it wasn't here. No, he talked about the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus was saying often over and over, you know, you have heard that it was said this X, Y, Z, but I tell you, so like you've heard it your whole life, you've grown up learning how to do something a certain way, but I'm going to tell you the way you should be thinking about this, or this is the way you should be learning this, or these are the things that you should be doing, not those things. Um, that was like Jesus is probably his main thing that he had to instill in people is to teach them the right way when we've grown up a certain way just because we grew up that way doesn't mean it's the right way or is the way that we need to be going or our mindset um 
like affirmations. We didn't probably any of us grow up being really positive with op- affirmations and um, even encouraging ourselves. Um, but that's something that is biblical um, and that we need to utilize. And we're learning, we're relearning this um, amazing thing. Okay, so over in the chapter, um, we've talked about like faith allergies. Did you, did anybody grab anything out of that area? For those of you just joining, we're going through chapter three. We're just kind of combing it and just finding some things that stuck, stuck out to us. Um, I shared something that I thought was funny. About, yeah. <laughs> when I was reading it, he was like, you know, I went in to get tested uh, because of my asthma and they wanted to figure out what was wrong with me. I just kept thinking, this man needs plexus. <laughs> <laughs> and it just, in that entire chapter, just made me laugh because that's all I could think. <laughs> That's hysterical. <laughs> I love the part of their failed attempt at planting a church because and I love how he just says it was so embarrassing. Like they went to all this work and like bank account, everything, and they never had one single church service. Yet he's not sad or mad that that happened because it helped them to build up that immunity to failure. And so the next time it was time to go build a church again, they did it and went after it. And now it's like a massive church. And so I love that part of that chapter of that section. Another thing out of that same area, when he was talking about the allergies and um, he, one section that I underlined was lion chasers don't hide from the things that they fear. They chase the lions into the pits. They expose themselves to the sources of their terror because they know it is the only way to overcome them. Lion chasers have a high threshold for fear because they have built up a fear immunity where he's talking about figuring out what you're allergic to or what like makes you scared. Or like Joe just said, like they, they built that, they started that ministry. They, you know, had all the things picked out, even the bank account. And then they never even had one service. And like, yeah, that would be, some people would just quit and be done forever but they use that experience to catapult themselves into a huge, um, much more meaningful ministry. Um, so yeah, that was awesome. I love that part as well. Towards the middle of the end, it says there's a section called time to take a stand. And it was talking about, um, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Did anyone have anything out of there that they wanted to add? It was really good. I have a couple of things if you guys don't. I do. I'm not sure who said that, but go for Katie. it. It's it's Debbie. <laughs> oh, hey Debbie. Okay. Um, I, I I actually underlined this and then written in this in the side of it, um, that because of their faithfulness and standing up for what they believe, um, lives were changed. So you know, they changed the life of the king and therefore the kingdom, um, just by being faithful and standing up for what they believe and being bold and courageous. I have goosebumps. Totally. And it's, it's, you know, sometimes we think, um, and not even like in our business, but in our spiritual lives, like we just think that if we stand up for something or we're brave about something that it doesn't really make a difference. We don't know who we're impacting. Um, Our church uh, yesterday, our pastor shared this story about this man and wife who went over to Africa to be missionaries. And um, they were there for a little while and there was one boy that the wife led to led to Christ. She couldn't really get out. I think she was pregnant at the time and it was a little boy who brought some eggs and she led him to Christ and oh, he, she prayed for God to bring her people and he brought her to the little boy. And she, so that was who she was going to talk to, led him to Christ. She ended up having her baby and then she died and the father got so bitter. He gave the girl to the other missionaries that were there because he said he couldn't take care of the baby girl. And he left the country and he was bitter, went into like alcohol and all those things. Well, that girl got passed off to another family, came to the U.S. And later she found out um, she ended up marrying a really great guy. And um, the family, so the, the, the little boy ended up growing up and leading like his whole village to Christ. The, like the whole thing, hundreds and hundreds of people. And like the mom there, it, it, her, her grave site was like revered because she changed their lives. Just her, that one person, I'll have to put their names and find the article. Um, our pastor told the whole story and I was just like, Oh my word. Like <laughs> it was incredible to show that, you know, when you are faithful and you are consistent and you do with what God sends along, you, you're faithful with that, that one boy that she was able to touch, you know, he did so much more. And, and later the girl went and found her birth father. And he was just like, he was dying as an alcoholic. He'd never had done anything more. And he said, we were just such a waste of our life over there. 
And she said, she told him, Papa, you don't know the whole story. And she told him, and at the end of his life, he did come back to Christ and, you know, got forgiveness for his life. But it's just, uh, you know, it's just crazy to think that it does make a difference, you know, when we stand up for things in um, our spiritual lives and then in our, you know, our lives with our families and that sort of thing. Um, I underline courage is doing what is right, regardless of circumstances or consequences, um, because we just have to trust Christ since for faith comes in. Okay. Anyone else? I see Tab and Brooke, you all have popped on. We're towards the end of the chapter, just kind of recapping, hashing, recapping, rehashing, <laughs> um, the fun of fear is kind of where we're at. But if you have something else prior to this that you've underlined, I'd love to hear. I don't even have the book yet. I don't know why I'm so lost about this. <laughs> oh no. I wonder, yeah. I thought that you were Gina or somebody hadn't had theirs last week. So I wasn't sure who all was still. Yeah. I wasn't on the call last week and I don't even know which That's book right. to be reading. Oh, it's in a pit with a lion on a snowy day. And I had shared it in our, in my Kate thread. And it was like $3 and something on, um, eBay or Amazon, like super, super cheap, like four bucks total shipped. So, and it came pretty quickly. Um, so I would look and see, I know there was a few more. It's, it's just this like yellow and white book. I know Kendra has the same, there's a couple with a different cover, but it's the same thing. Um, but the very last thing I underlined and y'all can recap the rest. If you have anything else, um, was his, his kind of final question was, um, are you living your life in a way that is worth telling stories about? And I thought that was so good because, you know, um, and Benaya in the, in the Bible that he talks about was the story of the lion you know, we're still talking about his story and I'm sure his kids were still talking about his story, you know, for years afterwards. Um, and that's the kind of like legacy I would love to leave with my kids and my family that they can share the things that the Lord did through a willing person and willing vessel. Um, anybody else in the bed else? Katie Baxter, do you got anything? To hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm hiding on my bathroom floor in the hotel. Cause we have no privacy here. Anyway, <laughs> I, I missed part of what you said. So I don't know if you talked about where they talked about how the fear of failure is not success. It's failure. And the fear of rejection is not acceptance. It's actually rejection. And I just found that so interesting to think about because so many times we do think, oh, my fear of failure will be better once I don't fail anymore. But it's accepting that, exposing, being exposed to that. And then, you know, you build up that immunity and then that's how you get that courage to keep moving and stuff. But I found that part very interesting. I love that. We did not specifically mention that. So thank you so okay. much for putting that. That was <laughs> Wasn't good. Sure if I just missed it. <laughs> Anyone else before we wrap up this part? I just love the last part, like the fun, like, just about the fun of fear and thinking like anytime we come across things in our business that are fearful, maybe messaging that person or whatever, maybe thinking like changing our mindset and thinking of the awesome stuff that can come from that by facing that fear and doing it. Maybe it's a total, you know, wipe out, whatever, but what if it's like your next diamond on your team or something? And just think like, it's just really cool to think of like, and if you look back on your life, you can remember instances too, where you were like so scared of something, but when you got through it, like think of thinking of how proud you were of yourself and like an exhilarating feeling, like, oh my goodness, like that was so scary. And I did it. And like, I succeeded in whatever it was that you were going after, but that's just a good reminder for when we are faced with our fears, like to think of like, all of the cool things that can come from it. And I love to it where it says the goal of life is not the elimination of fear. The goal is to muster the, the moral courage to chase lions, which is so good. And so, so stop shying away from the fear, like just face it. And which is really good for me. Cause I, I, yeah, I tend to, yeah, I just don't want to have fear and I just don't want to deal with it. So I'll just ignore that and do something that's more comfortable. So that was really, really good. I love that. Anyone else? Anyone else? I'll add something. Sorry. I don't know if you can see me. Hey, I don't have, I have the book yet, but I just started it. So I'm not that far, but it's just kind of long. Um, went with some of my devotions last week. Um, I always think when I have fear or I'm like fear of standing up for myself, um, I always think of Jonah in the Bible that he was like totally in his comfort zone and he was in his town. He was probably doing right. But, um, and when God asked him to step out and do something big, he obviously ran and we all know the whole story. 
And I always just think of like, what if Jonah just, what if God wouldn't have kept picking at him and got him to get go to Nineveh and have the biggest revival in the Bible? He would have never seen that result. And Jonah had no idea like who he was going to impact, what he was going to do in his life. He just had to take that step and go towards whatever God was calling. So that's how I always think of myself. Like, I don't know. I can't see the future. I don't know who I'm going to impact with my words. I don't with my actions, with my courage, unless I step out of my comfort zone and go towards whatever God has for me at that time. So it's kind of like the same of the book. I'm not there yet, but um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. I love that. Joe, were you going to say something? I was going to say, I love that too, because thinking of Jonah, like he had the worst attitude about the whole thing, yet God still used him. And throughout the whole, like he just had a bad attitude. He was mad, whatever, like the whole entire story, but yet God still used him. That was like super encouraging just listening to you, Italy, because thinking of like all the times, like we are doing the right thing, even though we have a bad attitude about it and we just don't even want to be there, but we're still doing it. And I think we can beat ourselves up about it because we know it's about attitude. We know we shouldn't be doing that. We're trying to do the right thing, have the right attitude and all the things and be who we're supposed to be. It's just hard. And just thinking of that, like God still used him. So even on those days where it's just not our most stellar day of our attitude, our mindset, God can still be working in us even despite ourselves. So that was really encouraging. Thank you. And I also thought, you know, even when Jonah balked at it and disobeyed, God didn't just throw him aside. He kept at him and then he eventually got it together, you know, but, um, that's just kind of how we work. Sometimes we're not just, Oh yeah, I'm just going to do it. No, it has to, you know, we have to get a lot of kicks in the seat to be able to get to where we need to go. <laughs> ah, okay. This has been so good. Ladies. I've loved all of it. Um, if no one has anything else for those of you who don't have your book, eBay has it really cheaply. It's literally like $4 shipped. So I would just go there and grab it. It's definitely worth purchasing and then you can mark it all up and have it to, as a resource later. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the um, kind of the working and training part of this call. So Joanna taught last week about recruiting and you know filling your funnel and getting people on board. And some of you have added several people this month already and I'm just so proud of you. Um, but this week we're gonna focus on retention. We kind of have mentioned that here and there. Last month was stellar. We added over a hundred some people in my team and even more in Joe's team. And then each of you all had great growth in your teams. And we want that to keep going. We want that to continue. Um, we don't want to forget about those people and let them slip through the cracks. So th there's a couple activities we're going to do after we watch this quick video. Um, I found this one by Sarah Robbins. It's been a long, long time since I've used her for anything. So I thought I would dig her um, YouTube out. And I found this one. There's a little bit of fluff. She kind of talks a little bit random, but she does have some good things to say here that I think that we can build on at the end of her um, finishing up. And um, I was excited about it because I know Terry Savelle says the same thing as well as what she shares about John Maxwell. So I think this is something that's really important for us to maybe um, consider adding into our daily uh, routine that can be really successful for us. So thanks Joe for posting and uh, sharing this. Hey, rock stars, Sarah Rack and Robbins here, author of the best-selling book, Rock Your Network Marketing Business, and creator of the CD series, The Rockstar Recruiting School, and my new one for leaders, The Masterclass Edition. I'm so excited to be here with you live. I just realized my book is upside down. Ha -ha, gotta love it. I'm so excited to be with you guys live on today's series of The Rock our recruiting school live where we are going to be talking to you about the five things you should do every single day that will lead you to success as you rock your network marketing business now before we get started let's get acquainted go ahead and shout out in the comments tell me who you are where you're tuning in from and don't forget you can get a shout for a share if you decide to share this live video on your page on your team pages because remember the more who know the more you grow well i just got um done with an incredible uh weekend with one of my mentors john maxwell and we were learning all things leadership and he was talking a little bit about how you know we of course as leaders we have systems in place for our team to succeed we know how to tell them to get off to a great start but a lot of times i get the question you know what do i do every day 
what do I do every day? And unless there's a plan of action in place, a lot of times we fill our time with, you know, idle things like check, checking Facebook, refreshing our downline reports, et cetera, et cetera. Anybody else? Raise your hand if you agree. Say, yep, I'm there. Me too. Okay. I see the thumbs up coming in. Um, if we're all being honest. But I love, um, John talked a little bit about the rule of five and really how important it is that we have a program, we have a plan that will lead our leaders to every single day success. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the rule of five and really what is it quite simply, I'm going to kind of read here um, because I want to share with you just some notes that I took down. The rule of five is simply a series of activities that you do every single day that are fundamental to your success. So for John, his rule of five is every day he reads, every day he files, every day he thinks, every day he asks questions, and every day he writes. And he said, you know, if you were a writer, if you did these five things, eventually you would build the right audience too over time. So what is the rule of five? Well, picture a tree, it's in your backyard and it needs to be cut down. Now, if you grab an ax and you take five good swings at the tree each day, eventually you would chop that tree down. But here's the thing, if you went and you started doing that to all these different trees, right? And you never went back to the same tree, would you do it? No. So I want you to think about, you know, as I say, you don't need a new opportunity in the new year. You need a new commitment, a daily commitment to your opportunity this year. So it says, you know, it may take a month to chop down a small tree and a big tree might take years to topple. The size of the tree, guys, is not the issue. The real question is this whether or not you diligently take five swings at that same tree every single day. I love that quote by Biz Stone, co-founder of Twitter. Timing, perseverance, and 10 years of trying eventually make you look like an overnight success. Timing, perseverance, 10 years of trying eventually make you look like an overnight success. So for leaders, a primary challenge is to identify the five activities most essential to success. And I'm gonna share with you mine for my business. If you guys wanna know, you guys want this to replicate, give me a good thumbs up and say, tell me more, I'm gonna tell you more, I'm so excited. But the, you know, um, then they have to put them into practice every day. The rule of five doesn't ask, what are the five things I'd like to do? It doesn't ask, um, you know, that's really more related to, to passion, but it doesn't ask, you know, what five things should I do? That sort of, you know, inquiry and covers your values. Um, but, you know, the rule of five really asks this. It asks, what are the five things I have to do every day in order to be successful? Posing this question, it really cuts to the heart of the daily behaviors that you need to be success successful in your business. It's tangible, it's behavioral, and it is measurable. And at the end of the day, you can review the rule of five and immediately assess whether you followed it. And ultimately, your organizational culture, can you imagine if the rock stars on your team, if they replicate this, it's gonna be more dictated by the things you do daily than by the mission statement that you guys post on your wall. I can say, hey, everybody, we're team dream and we dream so big, we're gonna do big things, right? That's one thing. But another thing, what if the things you did every day set the tone? I see people saying, high five, just give me the five. Okay, guys, here we go. Um, but here's the thing, I wanna give you guys a challenge over the next week, I really want you to think about what are the five things you need to do every day to build success in your business? And are you coaching these to your team? You know, really to create your own rule of five. And then of course, take time to plan them, do them, review them with the leaders on your team. I'm gonna be really um, reaching out to some of the leaders on my team and kind of pulling them and creating a good plan as well. So here's the thing. I kind of thought about this first and foremost as it relates to weight loss, but I'm going to tell you my five things that I'm committed to do every day. I'm going to do them every day for a month. I'm going to assess them. And of course, I'm going to share them with my team. And of course, with all of you as well. Um, I thought about my weight loss first and foremost. You can Google my weight loss story. It says Sarah Robbins weight loss story. And you'll see my before and after pictures, how I lost a lot of weight and kept it off for over 10 years. It was not a get you know, get skinny quick type thing. And it wasn't, you know, get skinny for a day and, you know, just kind of, you know, go back to normal. Um, over time, I've diligently done these five things every single day, sleep, eat, drink, 
supplement move. Sleep, sleep, eat, drink, supplement move. So here's the thing that I've been focused on every day to live a healthy lifestyle. My focus has never been being skinny. I don't count calories. I promise you that. And I don't exercise like a crazy person. I don't run. In fact, I don't run unless like somebody's chasing me with a gun. I don't run. Okay. So here's the, here's the things I do. I focus on making sure that I go to bed at the same time every night, typically around 11 o'clock, but I get to sleep till 8 a.m. every single day. I'm lucky to have a toddler who sleeps till 9 a.m., 12 hours at night, which is incredible. Um, when I eat, the main thing that I focus in on is, am I eating clean? So are these clean foods that are fuel for my body? So I make sure I eat lots of vegetables, um, moderate fruit. I eat healthy proteins, and I don't eat anything processed, nothing that comes from you know um, a box. Uh, let's just put it that way. So I make sure that I'm eating real, whole, healthy food, and I do not count calories, okay? I make sure that I mix in like a good healthy fat into my meals, um, that I get a good complex carbohydrate, um, some veggies, you know, there's always green on every plate, and then just a small amount of really good protein. I like to do organic, grass fed, all that good stuff as well, okay? Um, the next thing is, I wish I had my big water bottle. I drink three huge things, those big um, uh, uh, water bottles. I'm trying to think of what they're called, those big like Yeti, you know, water bottles, three every single day, one in the morning, and I fill it up at lunch, and then one in the evening, because I want to make sure that I'm getting at least half my body weight in water every single day. I take the proper supplements. I'm not a nutrition coach, so I'm not going to tell you what to take, and please, no network marketing links, guys. I love you, but this is generic training. And then, of course, I make sure that I'm getting movement in every day. And I try to keep it fun. If my son wants to take a walk, we take a walk. Um, if I want to go for a swim, provided the weather is good outside, we go for a swim. Um, I'll work out with the trainer, doing some resistance training, things like that. But I just make sure that I get some form of movement every day but Sundays, okay? So that's my rule of five for um, not just losing weight, guys, but being healthy every single day. That's really my goal, okay? So I thought about what's the rule of five for my business. Here's what it is. Write this down. There's five things I'm going to tell you that I'm committed to doing every day for 30 days. I'm planning them now. I'm doing them this month. I'm reviewing them and sharing them with my team because I want to have a replicating system that replicates every day, not just when new people start. And it's not just a team motto or culture that I'm gluing on the wall and putting out there. It's a culture of excellence. The things that I know are going to produce results every single day. Now, keep in mind, I've got hundreds of thousands of people on my team, okay? So I can speak from credibility. This stuff works. Okay, so here's the thing. It goes 10, 5, 3, 2, 1. Okay, but these are five things. 10, 5, 3, 2, 1. The first one is this. 10 minutes every single day, a minimum of 10 minutes every day, I'm going to be spending in prayer, personal, professional growth, and proclamation for my business. So again, 10 minutes of personal and professional growth. And within it can be your spiritual growth as well, a minimum of 10 minutes that I'm gonna be either reading something good on leadership, learning my business, growing personally, professionally, et cetera, but also the things that I'm declaring. So, um, you know, if I, I'm gonna be declaring some scripture over my business, over my leaders, over my health, over my finances, over my family, or if it's just declarations for you, the things that you're declaring every day. Guys, if you don't know anything about neuroplasticity, do you know that every single day you wake up, you can train your brain and literally it maps out the course of your day. What you're putting into your mind and what is coming out of your mouth is key and every single day as part of your routine needs to be at least 10 minutes of personal professional growth, prayer and proclamation. What are you speaking over your life, over your leadership, et cetera, okay? That's the first thing. The second thing is five. Five invitations every day. Now these can be the people that I'm inviting to events, to virtual events. These are the people that I'm reaching out to on Facebook via text, email, call, et cetera. I need to be reaching out to five new people every single day. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, I don't have five people to reach out to today. Well, that's where number three comes in. You're going to be making three new connections every day. Make three new friends on Facebook. Um, go to a group or network or when you're out and about, pass out samples. Meet three new people that day. Commit to making three new friends that day. That's how you grow your network. The next one, number four, is two. 
two follow-ups every day, two follow-ups, because the fortune is in the follow-up, reaching back out to people, because some people take seven to 10 tries before they say yes. Or if you don't have two follow-ups to make that day, it can be two touch bases to people on your team, two people you're reaching back out to that you're encouraging, okay? And then one, that's number five, is one Facebook post every day or one social media post every day. But here's the thing. Don't copy, paste, and repost other people's thing. Put some time into it. Facebook algorithms are changing. Think about how do I get interaction? How do I get engagement on this post? How do I get them to like, comment, and share? And remember, a post, it doesn't have to be about your business every day. Google Sarah Robin Social Media Summit. It's one hour that gives you 10 power posts, 10 ideas to post. That's not about buy my product and join my team. That's going to help you to build a powerful network online. I'm one of the top recruiters in my company. And I'm going to tell you this, the majority of my leads come via social media. And if you follow me on social media, you know that I don't post, buy my product, join my team. That's just not how I do it, okay? Thank you, Lane, for sharing. Thank you for everybody who's posting that you're sharing onto your team pages. I so appreciate you guys. So again, what's my rule of five for network marketing success in 2018? It's this, 10, 5, 3, 2, 1, okay? These are my five things. 10 minutes minimum. The moment you wake up, that you're going to commit to personal, professional, and spiritual growth. That can include your prayer, your proclamation. So the scriptures you're speaking, the declarations you're making over your life and over your leadership. Um, the next one is five invitations, five people every day, five new people are going to invite them to a call, coffee, meeting, event, or virtual event. Thank you all for sharing. The next one is three new connections every day. Make three new friends either on Facebook, LinkedIn, um, when you're networking out and about and passing out samples, et cetera. The next one is two, two follow-ups. Fortune is in the follow-up or two touch bases of somebody on your team, but two follow-ups of prospects, preferable. And the last one is at least one engaging post every single day. And remember, post today keeps leads coming your way, but it doesn't always have to be about your business. All right, guys, if you're loving this as much as I am, I want to encourage you, Google John Maxwell rule of five and even put in the word tree and you can see the whole tree analogy and learn more about that, guys. And um, I am actually tomorrow going to be posting more about what I learned from John over on my blog at sarahrobbins.com. So check it out this week. But don't forget to click the share button, share this with the rock stars on your team and come together and establish your rule of five. What are the five things you'll do every single day and create a culture that duplicates one of excellence and it's all about activity. It's measurable. Again, this is Sarah Robbins, author of Rock Your Network Marketing Business. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. Have a great day. God bless. Goodbye for now. Rock on rock stars. Okay. Okay. So that was awesome. And I actually just posted in the silver thread. I did go look up John Maxwell's um, rule five and I um, posted two screenshots. You guys can look up more. There was more to it. Um, but if you want to go read that, it was interesting to see, you know, what he had said about for his company. And um, he had some really good thoughts on that. And that was that everybody take their own personal rule of five and um, print it out and put it on their desk. So this is in his workplace, but then uh, everybody can see it that way. And then when they do that and you see, so if they see each other explain or doing one of the items on their five to send them a written message via like the, the email system or whatever to praise them for it. And they said it would just built such a good community and camaraderie between everybody, like praising each other and cheering each other on. Um, so that's kind of like our bingo boards that we're doing. We can see, now this is not like the exact same thing because you're not writing specific things, but the bingo boards that Joanna created were to just help you work your business, but make them a focus on um, specifically for recruit, retention, and ranking up. Um, so we're going to lead into the retention part. Um, and if you all want to write your fives, feel free to, if you really want to do that and focus on those yourselves, drop them in the team thread so that we can cheer you on while you are um, going for those. Maybe throughout this week, you can give it a try. Um, I loved hers that she had. It was really, really good and still applicable, even though that video is like two years old. I thought it was really good. Um, anyways, so let's move on for the retention. I, I was reminded today of something that I forgot that I haven't done with my new people I signed last month. So I wanted to work on that right now. And that is plugging our new people that we signed last month into the Engage app. 
Um, we often forget about it. I feel like I just always forget about it and I've got to get into motion of just doing it immediately. Um, I actually had a level one write me that I just signed a couple, like a week ago before this month. And she said, I read somewhere, I don't even know what she saw or read, but she said, I read somewhere that I have something free that I can send people. And I was like, oh my goodness, yes, let's download your Engage app. So let's stop right now. And if you didn't sign anyone last month, but you've signed somebody in the last six to eight months, I think the Engage app was still something with three free <laughs> samples. And they have those like, like Jen VF says, they're three seeds that Plexus gives them. They're like power seeds to plant for free. Um, that they can be recruiting people that way. And my friend already sent one to her mom and her sister today on her own, just after we talked about it. And I screenshot the Engage app for her. I showed her how to send them. Um, um, I suggested that she only ordered the Trivux. So I explained what the Microbiome Kids was and the Active was. Um, and she shot out two of those already. And she's not somebody who's technically planning to work the business, but I, she is on my, I have my eyes on her. So let's go ahead and take a few minutes right now. And let's go to our, so you'll go to your back office. If you don't have a list of your people, and then you're going to just, you can screenshot your list of level ones and you can organize them by date. And then you can, um, then shoot, just create a message about, um, the engage app and how you want to let them know that they have samples of the products that they're loving currently. And you wanted to make sure that they didn't, um, miss out on those, um, that amazing, um, free sample that that Plexus has given them. If anyone has questions, just unmute yourself and we're going to take about 10 minutes and do this real quick. This is also a good time for you to just check in on that new level one and make sure they're doing well with their products and everything.
Okay, so you guys can still finish doing that, um, but we're gonna move on before the time runs out. So um, talking about just having the daily five um, that Sarah mentioned, um, Donna Lee, or, or I'm sorry, Laura, she had actually written lists for people to do every single day. It was something that she did with her business and she was suggesting that if you're just not sure what to do each day, these would be great fallback options for you to just keep, maybe print them out, maybe stick them on magnets on your fridge. That would be awesome just to keep them in front of your eyes so you always know what you're doing. Um, so I just went to the gold and silver chats and I put the five days of um, activities in there. Um, so I thought that it would be great for anybody if you're new or even if you're older and sometimes you just forget the basics like wishing people a happy birthday or um, always remembering to friend people and um, not just you know, continue with your network you have, but continually be growing it and that sort of thing. So if you look at Monday, they're just very simple things. None, none of the tasks are hard or super time consuming. Um, but like the Monday one, I'm looking at it, it says, wish, wish friends happy birthday. You post daily, follow up with three potentials, five business reach outs. So these are very similar to what Sarah mentioned tonight. Um, invite two people to your next event. Um, 10 personal connection, reach outs, et cetera. So once you've done that, even for people who have a very full schedule, maybe you work another job, maybe you travel a lot. Those are all things that they don't take very much time. And if you're the kind of person that can set a timer, set a timer for 20 minutes and just, just see how many of those that you can knock off. I'm sure you're going to be surprised. You guys can probably finish over half, if not more of that list in 20 minutes. And you're going to have some genuinely good, um, time spent. It's not going to be the, the time where we waste half of it to scrolling our Facebook or Instagram or, you know, getting sucked into this comment or this post or whatever. Um, it's going to be very intentional and you're going to get a lot more done. Um, so that was something else that I was thinking would be great. If you're just not sure what you need to do by the day, maybe you're new, or maybe you, like I said, don't have really a great schedule. Um, and if that's not something that you can see yourself doing or those that many numbers or whatever, you can edit that to fit you because this is your business. Um, but these are just ways that you're gonna help um, keep your, your, your prospects coming and also retain the people that you are already, you've already put the work in for them. And the work doesn't stop when we've signed a person. Um, the work kind of just starts once we've signed that person because we need to be always sending that Engage app like we mentioned tonight. I'm um, just getting it into our routine with every person we sign. It's so, so important. And then also um, just following up with them every week to make sure they're loving their products and they're not sitting on the counter. That's really important as well because they're not gonna need to reorder if they haven't used all their products. So um, lastly, um, before we get off of here, um, we have three special gifts that we're gonna be giving away tonight based on the bingo participation. Um, I don't know if we're gonna do it the same way every week, I don't know. But I was just super excited and Joanna and Deb and I all went together and we have um, gifts for three of you people, three of you ladies or men who have worked so hard and so many of you had. So we just had different categories that we're randomly picking. They may be completely different next week when Deb does her call. That's totally fine. Um, but for me, I'm giving away a pink swag life rank up mug. So based on whoever has won that, you get to choose your rank um, or you can choose your next rank as kind of an affirmation if you want to do that as well. Um, but for the person who was the most um, participating in the um, bingo competition and also um, just somebody who has stood out this week as extra helpful in the chats, and that's going to be Kendra. I don't know if she's still on here but Kendra, you have been amazing. You've answered questions in pretty much all the threads. You're just, you've been extra helpful. You've been a total team player this week. And also you've worked your tail off on those reten the retention and the recruit chart. You were like crushing both of them. Um, so I'm just so impressed. So anyway, Kendra, you can choose, just DM me if you want it to, to say, um, I forget what your next rank is, is it senior gold or is it Ruby? whatever it is, DM me which one you want. You can even do an emerald one if you want. Whatever rank you want to have on your cup, you tell me and I will get that ordered later. Um, the next person who um, also participated, is, so this one's going for the most on an individual on the recruit chart, and that was Faith, unless someone has submitted one since I saw. But Faith was the next person to have put the most um, 
marks on her bingo board. So Faith, you are going to um, win Joanna's gift. And that is a beautiful pair of earrings. She'll DM you a picture of it. They're so cute. Um, so you're going to get, you're going to win those. Um, and then lastly, um, what is the next, then last person is someone who has showed up um, and actually met in person for the first time and has done a Zoom and created an event this week. And that was Gina, um, Gina Eversall. Um, and you are going to win the prize that Deb has. I'm not sure she's traveling or something tonight. So I'm not exactly sure what that is, but she will DM you the information about that. Um, so you can message her and let her know that you won the prize from her tonight. And then I'll let her know as well. Um, but we just love you all so much. You all have been amazing. This week was so, so good. And I know you have been faithful. You've been out there. You've been sharing. You've been posting. You guys, some of your posts have truly been just so inspiring and so heartfelt. I feel like this year, everyone has just been posting so real. I don't know how to say it. Just They've just been so good. Like not salesy, not copy and pasty. They're just literally so genuine. And I'm just, I love that because that's who we are as our team. We are not people who copy and paste because people can smell that a mile away. We are here to share why we love this product. Why are we doing this for our families? You, you have shared that. And I just, I love it. I love sitting there and reading your posts in watching your stories. They're all so heartfelt. And I just, I love it. I'm so proud of all of you. Um, before we wrap it up, Joanna, do you have anything to add? Okay. Yes. Really quick. So next week, make sure to read through chapter four of the, the book. And we are going to be filling out the recruit or the retention bingo board. So I will post it on the team page um, and hashtag it Ruby roadmap. So if you click on that hashtag, it brings up all the things Ruby roadmap. Um, and then, um, but that's pretty much it you guys. So work on filling out that bingo board, read the chapter four or through chapter four. And I'm just so proud of you all way to go. Yep. Deb's going to be leading it next week. Be sure to set an alarm on your phone. And so you don't forget about it. Um, and it's at eight 30. I think Kendra is always going to be at eight 30. So just so you know, it is kind of an odd time, but it works. It's not super late, but it's not quite, it's like kids are in bedtime. <laughs> so at least for me, my kids are in bed and I can get on the call. So, all right, ladies, have a wonderful evening and Hi, stay yes. safe and snowy. Oh, um, I was just going to tell you that I had printed out all of Don Lee's or Laura's, you know, weekly IPA things or everything. Um, and I actually am getting them laminated and just to keep on my desk and like lay it out the night before. So I know what I have to do right away in the morning. Um, because it was just easier because otherwise they're going to get lost in the shuffle of papers. And this way I keep them right on my desk and then I can just take a marker and check it off. And that to me, like, I like checking things off. <laughs> so, yes, my husband's the same way. He writes the list so that he has the satisfaction of writing it off. Cause it makes you feel so yeah. accomplished, you know, even if it's just like putting the laundry in or whatever you do throughout the day, it, every little thing helps. Um, yep. with, with what you said about laminating, you could totally throw a magnet on the back too, for people who want to keep them up. If you have little ones yes. like on your fridge. You know, mm -hmm. that's so, and then checking them off and then you just wipe them off for the next time. That's yep. awesome. I love that. I love it. Okay, everybody. I hope you all have a wonderful evening and stay safe if it's snowing where you are. And thank you all for being amazing. We'll talk to you next week.